All right, this is a short tutorial to deal with um, or to, to explain how to do credit sales with estimated returns and allowances. And we're going to do it two ways. We're going to do it first the way the Kiso book uh, does this example. And the second way is an equally uh, appropriate and potentially even more widely used uh, approach. And so I'll first start with the Kiso approach. Uh, we go through this example, and the example is that um, we are Vendon Company, and on January 12th of 2020, Vendon sells 100 cameras for $100 each uh, on account uh, to Amea Incorporated. Vendon allows Amea to return any unused cameras within 45 days of purchase. The cost of each product is $60, and Vendon estimates that three products will be three cameras will be returned the cost of recovering the products will be immaterial and the return products are expected to be resold at a profit so those number two and number three avoids the situation of writing down the the value of the inventory once it's been returned on january 24th uh, amea returns two of the cameras because they were the wrong color on January 31, Vendon prepares financial statements and, and determines it is likely that one more camera will be returned. Vendon makes the following entries related to these transactions. The first thing that they do is they record the sale by debiting accounts receivable and crediting sales for 100 times uh, 100 units times $100 selling price. We're going to use the perpetual inventory system where we record cost of goods sold and a reduction in inventory for 100 cameras at $60 each. And so this is a pretty straightforward sale on account. To record the sale of the, the cameras and related cost of goods sold on January 12th. Then on January 24th, Amea returns the two cameras that were the wrong color. Uh, we're going to debit sales returns and allowances and credit accounts receivable much like you've probably done in the past, but we're going to bring that inventory onto the books by a debit to inventory, returned inventory, and a credit to cost of goods sold. And this is for the two cameras at $60. And then, that was on January 24th. And, and then on January 31st, we're going to adjust our books because we're going to prepare financial statements. We have one more estimated camera to re, that will will be returned and so we're going to debit sales returns and allowances for that one more camera at the selling price of 100 and credit and allowance and this is a second second contra asset account to accounts receivable for $100 we also have the allowance for doubtful accounts which is a different reduction in allowance in accounts receivable we're going to debit estimated inventory returns, which is an asset account, um, an expected asset really, and a reduction in cost of goods sold because we're expecting to receive that and it, if we receive it back, it will not have been used up. So we're going to reduce the cost of goods sold. And this is just for that one extra um, inventory item that remains uh, something that we expect to receive after the balance sheet date. And this is to record the expected return, and this is done on January 31st. The result is we have an income statement and balance sheet that, at least in part, look like this. We have the original sale for $10,000, less the returns and allowances for three cameras, that's three times 100, gives us net sales of 9,700, and we have Related cost of goods sold for 97 cameras at $60 each, $58.20. On the balance sheet, we have accounts receivable, the $10,000 minus the $200 that has been returned already, that's $9,800, and minus another $100 for the allowance that we expect to come back. And that is separate from the allowance for doubtful accounts, which probably also need, would normally also be subtracted from accounts receivable. We have the accounts receivable, uh, net accounts receivable then being 9700 because they haven't paid any of it. And we have returned inventory. And here we combine the 
the 200 that's actually returned with the 100 that we estimate as being returned. Okay, so that's the way the book does it. Um, in class, we discussed the idea that an alternative would be to record the estimated return on the day of the sale. So this is how that would be, that, that would work. It is equally acceptable, and I'm sure there are people, uh, I kind of lean toward it myself, uh, that would recommend this over the, uh, the adjusting entry approach that only does it at the end of the period. Here's how it would go. On January 12th, when we record the sale, we would do the same thing as we done, did before, debit accounts receivable, credit sales, debit cost of goods sold, and credit inventory for the selling price and the cost of 100 cameras that were sold. On that same day, however, because we're estimating that three of them will come back, we would do an estimated allowance. And that is gonna be, we're gonna record that contra revenue immediately. It's a reduction in revenue for $300. And we're gonna have a credit to allowance for sales returns and allowances. And that, that allowance is going to be a reduction in accounts receivable for 300. And then we're also going to, because we're doing it um, both the selling price and the cost, we're gonna bring on to our books an estimated asset, estimated inventory re returns for, th for three times, a, times 60 or $180. And we're going to say, well, we're estimating that that's going to be returned. And if it is returned, we are not going to have cost of goods sold for that $180 because it wasn't used up. It came back on, and given the assumptions about how valuable the inventory is in the problem, it, we're going to reduce cost of goods sold for that $180 and put it on the balance sheet as an asset. And then on January 24th, when the customer brings two cameras back, here's what we do. It's very much like at this stage when we actually write off a bad debt. Nothing affects the income statement. We're going to debit the estimated allowance where we had set up $300. We're going to debit that for $200 for two cameras. And we're going to credit accounts receivable because we know that we're not going to collect from those two cameras. So we're gonna credit accounts receivable. We're going to have inventory come on our books. We'll, we'll separately call it returned inventory. And we normally wouldn't call it returned inventory because um, it, the packages have been opened and it's not quite the same thing as fresh in, in, inventory. Um, and, and we're gonna credit this estimated inventory returns, which was an asset essentially like a uh, inventory but we're going to it's no longer estimated it's going to take out of that so everything here is affect the current asset section and there's nothing that affects the income statement upon the actual return and then this was on January 24th and then at Jan January 31st you really don't need to do anything you've already dealt with it and no entry is needed at that day. The, the same result, the same income statement and balance sheet uh, result from either the sort of what I would call the contemporaneous approach, which is here in the light blue, or the uh, adjusting entry approach, which is the, what the book is uh, suggesting in, in the light yellow. And there you have estimated returns two approaches.